Good evening, everybody. Yes, I'm back at it again. Um, Bible study. And, you know, God gave me this again today. Matthew 7. We was in Matthew 7 last time. And we're in there again tonight. And I think it's a fitting Bible study. For one, because God gave it to me. Number two, I can see where this is needed in our society today. Well, go grab your Bible, or some of you may already know about heart. Matthew 7, we're going to be looking at verse 12 through the 28th verses tonight. Um, matter of fact, yes, we're going to be looking at 12 through 29. And as you grab your Bible, um, some of this, like I said, may sound very familiar. And uh, I just thank God, you know, because we have all got wrapped up. And I say all because it's hard to say you and, you know, not knowing everybody's opinion. But I know the um, United States of America, which is where I live, it's easy to see how we've all gotten so caught up on um, race, financial status, so many things that really is just a distraction from the devil. At the end of the day, me and the next man that walks in may be different complexions, but we're still the same race, human race. And I think once we can get past that, we can all unite and do what's necessary for the Lord. Um, and I'm, I'm saying all this, go, go ahead and grab your Bible to Matthew 7. I'm saying all that just kind of give you time to get your Bible, but also give us time to kind of get our minds in the right place. Uh, too much, too much hatred. You know, I, it's one thing as a Christian, it's, it's darn near impossible to hate another person, regardless of where they may come from or, or like I said, financial status or race. It's impossible to be a true Christian, a true child of God and hate somebody. And you look at that because a complexion does not sound anything. A complexion is, is just that. It's skin color. But it's your very heart that God looks at. God looks at your heart. And if a heart's not right, we got a problem. And again, I say, while you go to Matthew 7, it's impossible to hate somebody because of a color or a uh, race or, you know, as, as people like to put it. And still be a child of God. It's impossible because God is love. But hopefully you've gotten to Matthew 7 by now. We'll start at verse 12 and I'm going to read through it. And then we'll come back and just kind of take our time a little bit. And hopefully God is going to point out some things that maybe people maybe thought about, never thought about before. And even though I've been studying, God can still point more stuff out to me. And I, I thank God for that. Um, looking at verse 12, Matthew 7 verse 12, it says, Therefore... Whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Verse 13, it says, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. 14, because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. 15, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravages of wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by these fruits you will know them. Verse 21, it says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of, the, of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. 
depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Verse 24 says, therefore, whoever hears this saying of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. Verse 26 says, But everyone that hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built this house on the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. We're going to stop right there. Let's get ready to go into the word and really dig out some things. But before we get there, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for just those that you allowed to be able to watch on tonight. God, I ask you, Lord, the Father, that you would just penetrate their very spirit, God. Teach God, even though I may not be there, it's not even about me yet no more. God, I'm asking that you would do the teaching. You would do the reaching, God. You would do the healing. You would do the restoring, God. And you would enlighten your people, Father, so that we can get past these hurdles, God, that are, are making us stumble. Father, I ask you, Lord, that your light will shine in them, Father. Let clarity come in their mind, God, so that we can all begin to love as you say love, God. And we thank you, Father, for that anointing, God. We thank you, Lord, for, for teaching us and setting us apart, God. There may be somebody that's watching this right now, Father, that is not even saved, God. And I actually want to touch their very hearts. And if anyone that has happened to be watching this video that is not saved and wants to know Jesus for themselves, please inbox me. My name is Tyrese Barnes. You see it on there. Inbox me, and I will do my best to help you from there. Father, we thank you, Lord, for, again, what you're about to do, Father. Teach God. Teach your people, Father. Teach the ones, Father. Reach the ones, Father, that are hurting right now. Father, teach right now, God. Sow their minds, God. Give them peace that surpass of all understanding, God. Remind them of the purpose, God, that you have created them for. Father, we thank you, God, for everything, God. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings, Father. We thank you, Lord, for so many things, God, that you've given us, God, that we don't even take the time to just say thank you. Father, bring these things to our remembrance, Father. That regardless of how bad things may look in our situation, God will still bless. Father, help us to look and see the blessings in our life, God. And we thank you, Lord, for doing it. We thank you, Lord, for loving us way past anything we ever could deserve. For it is in Jesus' name we do pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Tonight, let's go ahead and get in this word. Looking at verse, excuse me, Matthew 7, verse 12, it says, Therefore, who... Excuse me. Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Now, this verse 12, we've heard this problem. Most of us heard this all our life. And it says, you know, treat others as you want to be treated. And we all had our way of kind of, you know, paraphrasing it. But look at this thing. Again, let's look at hatred. Because we all in society have experienced this in some kind of way. And it's retarded. It's really not. It's really a waste of energy. It has no purpose. And it gets you nowhere. But further, further, further into sin. God is not in sin. God is not in hatred. So if you're following hatred, who are you following? It ain't God. So check this out. Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you. I don't think I know many people in their right mind that wants to be manipulated, hurt, uh, held down, oppressed, or whatever word you want to use. I don't think I know anybody in their right mind that volunteers for that. So it says this, therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them. Now, remember this, just to go for clarity, God created us. God is love. If you ever really paid attention to anybody, even to the person that is the most, as society would say, obnoxious or loud or a uh, little hard to get along with, let's just put it that way, that person needs love. And if you can get past that hard exterior and love on them, you begin to see a strong change in their life. Yes, they may hurt you in the process. Yes, they may try to manipulate you. But you got to also understand, what have we done to God? When you look at the things that we have done to God, as much as he blesses us, then it's a little harder to, to dismiss another man or woman. 
Because if God could take the time to consistently forgive us, consistently love on us, not just bless us, but bless our loved ones right there in our face. We can see them in the morning, prayerfully. You'll see many of us get up, walk around. That's just God's love because he didn't have to wake none of us up. So anyway, if God can love us like this, even when we don't deserve it, why do we have such a problem loving our fellow man? Think on that. It says, therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them. This is the law and the prophets. That's not reasonable. You know what? That's why I said we're wasting too much time on, oh, he looks like this or she looks like that. Because really, we all desire the same things. And God is so much further beyond that. I want you to think about a mindset and I'm going to go back to this because this is the most blatant thing that we're seeing again in this society. Racism. God is way up here. He's about your soul. He's concerned about feeding you. Feeding you, healing your body, getting you back to him. Whereas racism is kind of down here where you, you know, you're talking about uh, childish things. You know, uh, uh, she pushed me, he hit me, and ran. That childish things. Racism is this far down because when you look at the big scheme of life, why is race important? Yeah, I can't find the answer to that either. It's not. God says, therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them. For this is the law. So if you want love, you give love. If you want forgiveness... You give forgiveness. If you want acceptance, you give acceptance. Verse 13, enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. There are many who go in by it. What is this gate we're talking about? Heaven. Look again at 13. Enter by the narrow gate. The narrow gate is Jesus. See, the wide gate is You've heard many people say the wide gate is, well, I'm a good person. I, I, I treat everybody right. Let's go. Cool. But word of God says the only way to the father is through the son. The only way to God is through Jesus Christ. So you can be an awesome person. But if you never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, hell is where you go. And somebody said, well, who said that you know it all? I don't know it all. But I do read. And I do trust and I do believe God. And this is what this whole book talks about. So it's not that I'm a genius. It's just that thank God I can comprehend a little bit. And it says without Jesus, no man should see the Father. So therefore, the narrow gate is those that is willing to accept Jesus Christ. Now the beautiful thing about Jesus Christ is, and accepting him, is I find out that I don't have to try to make it on my works. That means that if I miss the mark or if I sin, it's still a great possibility I can go to heaven with Jesus. Reason being, all I got to do is say, God, please forgive me. I got to be godly soul. Godly soul meaning I don't want to do it no more. Turn away and walk away from it. Don't mean that, hey, God, you know, all I got to say is I'm sorry. So I can smoke as much as I want and we still cool. I can lie as much as I want and I'm still going to heaven. I can cuss as much as I want and still go to heaven. I can hate as much as I want and still go to heaven. No, that's not what that means. It means to turn away. It does not mean you're going to be perfect. So it is a process. It is a process, and I like to tell people, if you've been doing it wrong 35 years, you cannot expect to have it all down packed in three months, or have it down packed in two months, in two years, 10 years. But there should be progress. See, that's all God is looking for. He's looking not for perfection, because you already obtained perfection when you accept Jesus Christ. Now, somebody may have got lost on that, but what it is, Jesus is perfect. So when you accept Jesus, into your heart. God does not see you anymore. He sees the blood of his perfect son covered over you. 
So therefore, you are now perfect in Jesus Christ. Now, that is another reason why you got to accept Jesus in order to get to the Father. Because I don't know about you, but the way my mind works sometimes, I don't always have godly stuff on my mind. And what God says, that, what a, that sort of a man thinketh, that is he. So therefore, if you thought it, it's just like you've done it. So, going back to this, it says, Enter by the narrow gate, which is Jesus. For wide is the gate, and broad of the way that leads to destruction. The wide gate is, uh, man, one word religion. The wide gate is, I don't need Jesus to get saved. Anything outside of Jesus is the wide gate. So, to narrow that down, that's how you look at it. Wide gate is anything without Jesus. Because, truth be told, to follow Jesus, which means I got to fine tune some things in my life. Which means I shouldn't be comfortable cussing no more. Which means I don't need to be watching porn. Uh, he said, yeah. I don't need to be watching that. Which means I don't need to be doing all those things that makes my flesh, flesh feel good. But I should be chasing after the spiritual things. I should be doing what God says to do. So those are the techniques. That's what, that's what starts to separate us uh, for those that are saved and unsaved. Because you really can't do any kind of thing and expect to go to heaven. God has made that clear. Living any kind of way is the wide gate. And that's what man says. You can still do that way and go to heaven. But I'm letting you know, God says, that's impossible. That is a lie. Okay? It's impossible to live any kind of way and still go to heaven. Amen? Amen. All right, verse 14, it says, Because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. It's hard being Christ-like. It's hard being Christ-like. It's okay to say it. It's hard being Christ-like. I get it. It's hard for me. It's hard for anybody who has ever decided to be a child of God. Because natural instinct is, if you roll your eyes at me, I think I want to roll my eyes back at you. That's natural. God says no. So it is difficult because, again, verse 14, this is out of MacArthur Study Bible, because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. Life eternally is what we're talking about. And there are few we find it. All right? Verse 15. Now, here we go. This is why you got to be careful. You got to know your word for yourself. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You ever heard, you, and I'm sure all of us are saying, you got to be careful not to judge, but you do look at the fruit, and we're going to talk about that. You got to look at the fruit that they bear. So now check it out. If you got a prophet, say, man, you don't really need, uh, not a prophet, false prophet. It says, man, you don't really need Jesus, man. You know, somebody spit on you, you're supposed to spit back. Mm, that ain't what God says. Look at the fruit that they bear. If they are doing any and every kind of thing, if y'all standing in the line at the club together, you got to look at the fruit. God, that's why we have to separate ourselves. And I know that stepped on somebody's toes right there. But it was supposed to. It's supposed to because as Christians, remember the saying, y'all remember New Jack City? And I, you know, those that was at one of the last times I preached, you heard me say that. Remember what it said, are you my brother? I am I my brother's keeper? Okay, we should be. We should be. Because it takes, it takes us to be able to say, you know what, man? LeVar, I see you watching, bro. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this. As you use you as an uh, uh, as a uh, uh, example, Laval, you should be able to come to me and say, you know, Tyrese, man, I don't think you should have addressed that guy the way you just did, and I should not be offended because I know I'm wrong. This is a brother in Christ is addressing me and telling me, Tyrese, you handled it wrong. That's not Christ-like. That's where we should be at. Why are we so sensitive when we know we're doing wrong? The first thing that a lot of us like to say is, why are you judging me? Would you rather me? First of all, check this, check this out. If I tell you what God says, I'm not judging you. I'm telling you what God says. God says thou shalt not lie. So if you lie every other sentence, 
Am I judging you or am I telling you what God said? God said don't lie. So yes, we need sometimes for somebody to say, man, you know what, man? No, it ain't good to be lying. That's what God is saying. And somebody maybe still kind of got a little mixed up. I, I'll say this. It's just like if I'm going down the road and the speed limit say 55 and I'm running 75 and you say, hey, bro, don't you think you need to slow down? Am I supposed to now turn around and say, why are you judging me? No, that makes no sense. Well, it's the same thing with what we do when somebody tells you, man, you shouldn't be lying. Why are you judging me? It makes this, it's the same as that example. It makes no sense either way. So check this out. If you know you're wrong and your brother come and tell you, hey, accept it. Because we, that's, that's how we work together. Okay? So that we can grow as children of God. And so we can all reach to the same destination. Hopefully we're trying to be with the Lord. All right? So it says, you know them by their fruits. Okay, we talked about that. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes? All right, this is an example of there's no way in this world you can go find a thorn bush and find a grape on it. Basically saying, you'll know them by the fruit they bear. If they got a thorn bush, is going to have thorns. Grape tree, or grape vine, excuse me. Grape vine is going to have grapes. If you go to a grape vine, you see a vine and you don't see no grapes, but you see thorns on it, there's something wrong with that thing. It's just like going to an apple tree and you say, Dang, I know it's an apple tree. I'm pretty good with trees, but you see bananas hanging off it. Something's not right with that tree. So it's the same thing. It says, Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes and figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. Pretty simple. That's how you know who you're dealing with. That's how you stay away from false prophets. If they still cussing all day, 24 hours, and running behind women or running behind men, you might want to check the fruit. Okay? All right, I'll stay there. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit, this is what God said he says about the, about the fruit. He says, every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Fire, remember lake of fire? Every person that ain't bearing good fruit, every person that ain't following Jesus Christ, again, it don't mean you got to be perfect. It just means you have to be striving. If you're not striving, he says, I'm going to cut you down and throw you into the fire, lake of fire, okay? Therefore, by their fruit, you will know them. 21, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. 22, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, we have not, <coughs> excuse me, have we not prophesied in your name and cast out demons? In your name and done many wonders in your name. Check this out, y'all. Verse 22, I'm going to read this one more time. It says, many will say to me in that day. This is the, what the Lord is saying. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? And it goes on to say, cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name. Stop for a second. Look at this. Many will say to me, God didn't say that they done it. They said they cast them out. Because if they had truly been a child of God, God would have already been there. The Holy Ghost, see, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. If you say you got the Holy Ghost in, which means you got all three in, which means whatever I do, God is right there. Plus, God is omnipresent, which means he's everywhere at the same time. Now, why would I need to tell God what I did and he not know? Or it says, many will say to me in that day. Basically, all I'm trying to say to you is, If I told you, first of all, if my fruit didn't line up and I say, I cast them out, but you didn't talk to the person that had the demon cast out. Do you know if I cast them out or am I lying? 
This is what I want you to see in verse 22. Many will say to me, they telling God they cast him out. But where's the person that you supposedly cast it out of? So if your fruit not lining up, lining up, and you're not following Jesus Christ, yeah, you can go out there and tell anybody, man, I wave my hand and everybody in the church just fell down. But if you're living hellacious, if you're living a life that's not pleasing to God, then that's my way of telling the story. It don't mean it happened. Or they, hey, whatever reason they fail. But talk to the ones that actually did the fallen to see if in their life they was actually healed, set free, and delivered. That's who you talk to. So what this verse is trying to say, many will say, we're talking about false prophets. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast our demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? That's what they're saying. And then I would declare, this is what Jesus says, and then I would declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Lawlessness meaning you who practice sin. So that's how you watch for false prophets. Look at the fruit. Look at the fruit. Don't go by what they say. Sit back, be quiet, and watch. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. Ask God to give you discernment, and he will do it. And I'm going to tell you something else. This is one thing that I, 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 I do know. Some people that aren't even saved yet can tell whether you real or not. They can tell. You ain't fooling nobody but yourself. So, and you definitely ain't fooling God. Let's get it straight, y'all. Let's get it straight. Verse 24 says, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does not, and does them, I will, excuse me, starting over. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rock is Jesus. So whoever does these things and is a wise man, he'll accept Jesus Christ. And it says, And the rain descended, meaning life. Judgment, different things. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on the house. Meaning, all these things happened to that person, but he made, his, he made Jesus Christ the rock. So he's standing on Jesus. All these things happened, the floods came, the winds blew, the, and beat on the house. And it did not fall. For it was founded on the rock, which is Jesus. See, life happens to everybody. But if you accept Jesus Christ and you got to the point, not just you got past the accepting now, you're to the point where you're trusting him. You have faith in him. That all the things may look completely crazy right now in your life. You understand that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. You also understand that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and call according to his purpose. Now, check this out. If When you get to that point, it could be pure chaos in your life. But you're still saying, God, I trust you. They don't even understand what's going on. I don't know why these people keep saying these things, but God, I trust you. God, I trust you. And that's when you go into your, as they say, secret closet. The secret closet could be your car. Whatever. Wherever you can get in tune with the Lord. And you just begin to meditate on them. And the next thing you know, you're just like, man, it don't even make a difference. Oh, they repoed the car. Oh, that's what's up. That's cool. Oh, man, my job just fired me? Yeah, I guess God got something better for me. That's when you can stand on the rock. Now, let's keep going. Verse 26 says, But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them would be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The sand is everything else. Remember that wide gate? And the rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew, and beat on that house, just like the first person. But this house failed. It says, and it failed. And great was its fall. Check this out. The difference that you may be looking for in your life, all the things that you're saying, you know, man, it's just, I got to have more, got to be more. God, I know something got to be better. All the things that you're looking for, you will always fill a void until you accept Jesus Christ. You can try to fill it with anything you got on your mind, 
It can be women, it can be men, it can be drugs, it can be alcohol, it can be cars, it can be dogs, whatever you want, it's still going to leave you with a void. Because God created us. And by him creating us, he made us in his image. So now we've been made in his image. If you're walking around in his image, but you don't have him on the inside, you're going to always fill a void. You feel me? So for those that have not accepted Jesus Christ, you got time to keep playing around. You ain't got time to keep playing around. Go get him. Accept him. All you have to do is repent. First of all, I'm going to check, check this out. And, and, and it's, it's no... Yes, you can look at uh, Romans was it, 10 and 9 and uh, 9 and 10. And, you know, you can go through Romans. I'm, I may be, you know. And, and it says, you know, uh, if you believe in my heart and confess with that mouth, you know, the, the Lord Jesus... The God raised it from the dead and you are saved. And I'm kind of paraphrasing. And you can do that. But I like to break things down so I can completely understand it. And make sure that others can understand it. Basically, if you want to get saved, first you got to realize, recognize that you're a sinner. And we talked about just the Ten Commandments alone. You talked about, God said, don't kill, don't steal, don't commit adultery. Thou shalt not have no other God before thee. Honor thy mother and father, and the days on earth shall be longer. Those are just a few things. But check this out. If you thought about committing adultery, man, she looked, oh, and your mind just go way too far. You went from, man, she looked good to, ooh, ooh, you committed adultery. Or if you said, God said, thou shalt not kill. And you didn't kill nobody, but you showed up murdered them 25 times in your mind, you killed them. Those are just the simple Ten Commandments. So once you ask, once you realize that you are indeed a sinner, because anybody that has not accepted Jesus Christ, we are made that way. We were born as a sinner. And somebody says, as a child, as a as a as an infant, how can an infant be a sinner? An infant can be a sinner. Well, first of all, they don't have the knowledge. Once they get to know the age of knowing right from wrong, then you'll see it. Parents, we've seen it. And if you can go back far enough to when you were that age, we've done it. So anyway, kind of getting off a little bit, but you first got to acknowledge that you are a sinner, that you have sinned. And without Jesus Christ, those sins you will take with you to the judgment seat. You will bust hell wide open, as people like to say. But if you accept Jesus Christ, all those sins that you know about and those that you may not even realize you have sinned, they are wiped away. And I say this a lot. Remember the old chalkboard that we used to have in school? And you used to teach it with right stuff on that chalkboard. When you accept Jesus Christ, it's like taking that chalkboard and wiping it away. Or, for those that don't know them about the chalkboard, it's like erasing a screen completely black. It's just, it's completely clear. That's what happens when you accept Jesus Christ. But you have to first realize that you are sinning, and then you ask God to forgive you. You ask Jesus to come into your heart, make you new, make you clean, clean me up. I ask you to come on the inside, Lord. I am now yours. Have your way in my life. Once you do these things, you ask God to come in. You are an accent. Say, Look, I want you to be my savior. I, want, I, I accept that you went to the cross for me. I accept that you died for me. And I accept that God rose you up on the third day. And now I accept that I can't save me. But you have already saved me. And now I accept this gift of salvation. Once you do that, and somebody says, man, that's not how it goes. Trust me, if you break it down and you actually meditate on it, it's just asking them to come in. Cleanse you up. That's all you're doing. Once you've done that, you're saved. And I want you to do something else. If you know somebody that's in this word that is bearing good fruit, go to them. Ask them to help you to get to know Jesus even better. 
all he wants. He'll do it. But he has put some great people out here that can assist you as well. But watch the fruit. Watch the fruit that they bear. Don't follow yourself with false prophets. Okay? Look at the fruit. But God has put people. I ask God to send you someone that can help you to grow in the Lord. God has so much better for us. And, you know, some people say, well, I know my great grandmother, my grandmother was poor. And, 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 but she loved the Lord. So God don't always give you financial blessings. No, he don't. That's true. But what he will do is give you peace that surpasses all understanding. And he give you a guaranteed spot with him in eternity. So check this out. Trust God. Come to him. Ask him to come in your life. And watch him make a new thing in your mind. Watch him renew your mind. Get in this word. There's so many Bibles out here now. No, holy Bibles. Let's go. Let's go where the real is at. There's so many holy Bibles. They talk about Jesus Christ. Okay, if there's anybody got a question on that. There's so many versions to where you can get it broken down to, you know, where the youngest of youngest can understand it. Get into it. It's thou dust and thou, you know, it, that's cool if you can understand it, but if you can't, it's doing you no good to so get you something. This is a MacArthur Study Bible. They got King James, which most people have, you know, issues with reading, but they got the new uh, NIV. There's so many. So, so many. And I will say this be careful going on the internet reading because I can put things on the internet. So, but go get you a Bible that you can really understand and then you know link up with somebody that's bearing good fruit so that they can teach you and so you can grow in the Lord because that's what he wants that's why we're here we're here for only a season y'all just a season let's make it count I love y'all but guess what and it's a cliche as people say but now nah, I really really mean it God loves you more all right take it easy good night